Hello Heathens at home and I hope you're enjoying today's Mark and Sarah show. So today for our quick craft I thought I would do something seasonal again. So last week of course we made our cardboard pumpkins with just some cut card and some paper fasteners. So this week as bonfire night is coming up on Friday, I think it's Friday, um, what I thought we'd do is we'd make these silent fireworks, these indoor fireworks. So um, not everybody enjoys the loud bangs and whistles of fireworks and bonfire night. Um, so I thought we'd do this kind of indoor craft to, uh, to make our own sparkly fireworks for ourselves. So as you can see it rotates because it's a pinwheel. Um, and at the end of the film I'll put a little bit up of me blowing the pinwheel so you can see how it works. Um, so. The materials that we need today are we need some shiny card, I've gone for gold. We need something like this paper stick or paper straw. I'll bring these up closer for you to have a look at. Uh, so hopefully you can see there, these are like solid paper sticks. It's not focusing very well is it, but there we go. Anyway, I've got a pack of those. To use as my handle. You're going to need some sellotape, you're going to need a drawing pin, a pencil, a ruler and some scissors and you're going to need some of this stuff. So this stuff is, um, it's called shreds quite often, it's loose tinsel, it's the stuff that you would throw at your Christmas tree. Um, so last week when I made my pinwheel, oh I've lost a bit um, I went for gold and red. This week I thought we'd go for gold and blue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my pinwheel. So I'm just going to move my shreds to one side um, and my pins etc. And we're going to work on the back of our shiny card. So I'm going to measure the top and that should be around just under 21 centimetres, so it's 20.9 centimetres, and we need a square. Um, and because it's card, I'm not going to try and fold it to make a square, I'm going to measure it. So I'm going to put my ruler down the side and find 20.9 centimetres on each of the long edges. Just make sure that that's accurate. 20.9. And then I'm going to use my ruler to join them up. Now, if you're quite proficient in craft, you could use a, a Stanley knife, well not a Stanley knife, a craft blade to do this, um, but it's much safer to use a pair of scissors. So we're just going to cut this end off the card. So I'm going to follow that line. And I'm going to tuck that away because I don't need that anymore. So. Now that we've got a square, we need to find the centre of this square. So I'm going to put my ruler from one point to another and put a little line, a little mark. And then I'm going to do the same the other way. And if I bring this up, hopefully to you, you'll be able to see, maybe, where I've got that little X in the middle to find my centre point. Now the next thing I need to do is remind myself how many centimetres I cut down. Yeah, it was ten. So on a standard A4 piece of card, what you're going to do is you're going to put your ruler from one point to the opposite one, so we're working diagonally, we're going to put the zero mark on the corner and then making sure the ruler goes to the middle point. We're going to draw a line from the corner to 10 centimetres and I'm going to do this quite dark so you'll be able to see it. And we're going to do that all the way around. Just making sure I'm lining everything up all right. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll bring this up to show you again. Hopefully you'll be able to see in this light. The card's a bit shiny to be able to see it. But we've got lines coming from the corners 10 centimetres down. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut along those lines, but we're not going to go all the way to the middle. Okay? So just along the 10 centimetres. And then we stop. Okay? So we do that on all four corners. Now, I had meant to bring in my book binding awl. An awl is a, a tool that we used last week actually to poke holes into card, but it should be alright. We should be able to use the pins to do this effectively. So I'm just going to remind myself, yes, I'm going to make this work the other way I think. So we need to put five holes into our pinwheel on the wrong side. So we'll use one of our pins. We need to put a hole into the middle, into the center point. So you need to make sure it pops through well. And then you need to put holes in four of the corners. So when you put a hole in one of the corners, so I'm going to start up here. Make sure it pops right through. The next corner you miss and you go round to the next point. So if you've done this point, you miss its matching one here. And we move on to the next one. So you're always doing opposites. Well, not quite opposites. You're basically missing one and moving on. So we're going to get those holes in. So I've put one in this corner. So I'm going to miss this corner. Move on to the next one. Making sure that that pin easily passes through the card. So this corner I've put a hole in. This one I'm going to miss. And that's the four points that we're going to uh, curl down, curve down into the centre that makes our pinwheel. So, the next thing you need to do to make your pinwheel is you need to uh, put a, a little hole into the stick that you're going to attach your pinwheel to. If you need a little bit of help with this, because it can be fiddly, do ask someone for help. Um, if you're using something like a stick from the garden, it'll probably be a lot easier, but these crafting sticks, these paper sticks, are quite tough and they're quite fine. So, I'm just going to very carefully poke my pin into that, make a start on it. Ooh, it's quite tough. I may need a sharper pin because that is not going to be good enough. Right, hopefully that will work. So what we need to do now is each of the corners that we've put our holes in, we want to put the pin through from the shiny side. So I'm going to start in one corner and I'm going to move to the next one. And put that pin through our pre-made hole and then bring the next one in. And again, if this is a little fiddly for you, you can ask someone for help. Depends on the thickness of your card or your paper how fiddly this is. So, you can see my pinwheel is already starting to come together, but I need to push that centre down through the middle hole that we've already made. So... And then, the tricky bit is to get the pinwheel into the stick. Okay, I'm back guys, and I have managed to get my pinwheel stuck to my stick. Um, 
It seemed like I picked the only stick that a pin would not go into. As soon as I picked another one from the packet, it worked. Uh, typically. But anyway, we've got it going. So, I'm just going to move my other pins out of the way. What I need to show you now is how to make these lovely streamers for the corners of our fireworks, for the, the kind of spiralling bit of our Catherine wheel. And what you're going to need to do for that is to take some sellotape and then take some strands or shreds of this tinsel. So I do it by taking a couple of bits at a time, making sure they're in the middle. So I'm going to take two gold and two blue. Um, and it doesn't matter if the lengths aren't perfect. And I'm going to, in the middle, stick them onto a piece of sellotape. So I've got it roughly in the middle on the sellotape and then I'm going to get another two of each colour. So two blue, two red. So you've got eight strands in total. It's just if you try and work with eight strands all at once, it's a bit cumbersome. Making sure we're roughly in the middle and then sticking them down onto our sellotape as I say. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my sellotape. I'm going to fold where I've put the strands in half. And then I'm going to wrap it around a little bit. So once I've wrapped it round, I'm going to cut that off. So, you've got your shreds, like this, stuck together with your sellotape. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold that in half again. So you've got this solid end. That solid end, I'm going to give a quick wrap in a piece of sellotape as well. So I'm just going to put it on the end there, in the middle, pull it down a tiny bit and cut it off. So those wraps are all really well stuck together. And as you can see, I've already made another three. So all we need to do now use our sellotape again. I'm going to turn my sellotape round the right way around again because I had it the wrong way around to do it. I'm going to take some sellotape, take those wraps and glue them, glue them, sellotape them to each corner of our firework. And my fireworks just popped out of the stick again. I don't believe it. This one's been a perfect gentleman and worked absolutely perfectly and this one keeps popping out for some reason and not doing as it's told. I think I have to find a better stick to be honest. So I'm just gluing that onto all the corners that don't have the holes in basically, that have the points. Right, and if I can try and pop him back together again, he's been very naughty. Hopefully, I can hold this up for you to have a look at. And there we are. That is our noiseless crafted Catherine wheels. So as I say, I'll put a little film up of me blowing this closer to the camera at the end. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one guys and I will be back next week uh, with the same pre-recorded film as last year as uh, Remembrance Day is coming up, the 11th of the 11th, um, so it's the poppy appeal, so I will be sharing the origami poppy instruction with you guys and see you again soon, bye!